I'm going to ask you all a question that I think I've uh, asked uh, over the last seven years. I don't know how many times, hundreds of times. I asked it when we first brought Jacob's Law out to the floor of the New York State Senate. And we did that two times when we were in the majority uh, to pass Jacob's Law. And I asked everybody on the floor, as I do in many events when I talk about Jacob's Bill, Jacob's Law, who as a parent or who has a child would not want to know if their child was being bullied in school? And I ask anybody in ear range who could hear my voice and anybody here, raise your hand if you wouldn't want to know if your child has been bullied in school. Nobody ever raises their hand. When I asked that on the floor of the Senate the two times this past, nobody raised their hand. In the, two, in the bill passed twice, overwhelmingly. Uh, Thank you. I hope that stays there. A little bit sliding. Today, uh, after we have this press conference, we're going to go to the assembly chambers, and our session starts at 11. Uh, if it's legislative time, it could be 11.15, 11.30, 11.45. But uh, our, our representatives here who have faced this issue will be there, and uh, we'll be bringing out to the floor this resolution which I wrote and sponsored and uh, was supported in a bipartisan nature. And we're bringing this out to the floor for a discussion. And what the resolution is, is to declare October, that month, uh, Bullying Prevention Month in New York State. I can't think of a better time to have the individuals who face this massive injustice and this tragedy to be here today at this press conference to support a piece of legislation called Jacob's Law, which will do exactly what this resolution calls for. Will help to prevent and mitigate the tragedy of bullying and how it can impact our young people and anybody in our particular community. Before I go any further in talking about the law, I just want to introduce to you the individuals who are here. And I'm so proud that this is a bipartisan piece of legislation in the Senate and the Assembly. It's being sponsored in the New York State Assembly by Assemblywoman Mary Beth Walsh, who's here with us. It's being sponsored with my colleagues in the New York State Senate by Senator Robert Jackson, which I'm proud to have with me, and Senator Louis Sepulveda, who is also on the other side of the aisle, but understands the importance of parents involved in their education. Also another sponsor with several of my other colleagues is Senator Walzak, who is here with us in uh, the very important people who have experienced this tragedy and are turning into something very positive is Christina and Richard Terrace, the parents of Jacob in the corner. And next to me, Isabella Sematilli, anti-bullying advocate with her parent, Paula Sematilli. And we're so proud to have you here uh, telling your story. And uh, she's gonna tell a story about how one act it happens over and over for many children, day in and day out. But one act can possibly destroy the life of an individual and a family. Uh, but I like what she has to say. We all should be, and she is a tough cookie who doesn't crumble. And she turned her tragedy into something very special. Now, you may have heard over the last couple of days, the Surgeon General at the federal level has come out and spoken about a developing and an expanding epidemic in this state and across this nation. Do you know what he talks about when he talks about what the epidemic is? It's loneliness and it's isolation. I can't think of another group, perhaps our seniors in many ways, but another group who is very lonely, I know, and isolates themselves because of this tragedy in many ways, are those children who are being bullied. And you know, I like to say, tongue in cheek, I had a real job at one time. I was an educator for 10 years. Taught kids with learning disabilities, ran a resource room, got my degree, special education from the College of St. Rose. And I could tell in a classroom, sometimes it was just a family issue, sometimes they weren't getting their nutrition, but many instances they were looking over their shoulder because they were being bullied. We spend billions of dollars to provide kids in New York State with a great education. They shouldn't be distracted from it. But most importantly, they shouldn't be impacted psychologically, emotionally, mentally, or physically 
by bullying that takes place and takes away from their ability to concentrate. I could see that in some of my students. And in many instances, we had to deal with bullying. Now, when you think about bullying, you think about your lives, and I think about my life. Some things have stayed the same, but some things have changed drastically. It's been there before, it's there now, probably be there in the future. What has stayed the same, and I remember this from my own experiences, not overwhelmingly, but things happen, is that young people are embarrassed when they're bullied. They don't want to go home and tell their parents what is happening. And that can turn into a tragedy. That's why it is so important to let the parents know when their child is being impacted like this. The second thing which has changed with bullying, it's a whole different world out there than we experienced it when I was there, many of you were younger. But when we were bullied at school, if we got past the doors and the gates of the school and we got into our house, there was some reprieve. There is no reprieve now. Social media is 24 seven. And it's psychological, it's emotional, it's getting on those sites and continuing it. Then it's coming to school and continuing it and it can wear you down. And it can impact you in a whole variety of ways. Now we passed a bill, Dignity for All Students Act. A good bill. You know what the bill does. It mandates, it requires, if a bullying incident takes place in our school and rises to an important occasion of how it, it took place, it has to be reported to the state education department. Unbelievably, it does not have to be, it is not required to be, it is not mandated to be reported to the parents of the child who's being bullied or the child who's, who's being doing the bullying. And let me make something clear. When I talked about that isolation, that loneliness, I think those kids who are doing that uh, bullying are facing some of the same things. They have a real problem, and their parents are going to be notified by this law, as well as the parents of the child who's being bullied. Because I don't think there's a parent, and I could ask you to raise your hand again, who thinks that it's good for their child to be cruel, to be bullying, and to grow up with a situation and think that's our right to do. So on both sides, this reporting issue requirement says, to the parents of the child who's being bullied, report. To the parents of the child who's doing the bullying, they need to be dealing with this also. And there has to be mitigation. Now let's think about this. You've probably heard this over and over and over again like I have. We want the parents to be involved with their education. Join the PTA. Have parents teachers meeting. Help us with the individual education plans. Volunteer. Raise money. Be a part of it. But yet, yeah, it's unconscionable when their child's head is being blamed into a school locker, a girl or a boy, they may not be notified. In many instances, they're not. And it can take a serious toll. And it has taken a serious toll. And Christine and Richard are here to tell you about their toll. Because they were not notified about the extent and the level of bullying that was taking place. And I think with Jacob, there was loneliness, there was isolation. And the sad part, a beautiful boy, as you see right there, took his own life. <laughs> and I can, I can tell you that they believe, and I believe, if they were notified, he, he, he very well would be alive today. So uh, this is a personal issue to me as a fellow e e educator, uh, someone who's in a classroom. Uh, we've passed it twice. There's no reason not to pass it again. And uh, before I bring my colleagues up to say a few words, I think we really have to hear from those who've been victimized by this concern, this problem, so we get a complete understanding of what they, this is not a political thing. It shouldn't be a partisan thing. When it can pass with Democrats and Republicans twice in the Senate, uh, I think we have to do everything we can to let parents be a part of the mitigation of this concern in this particular problem. So I want to have uh, my personal heroes, along with this young lady and her family, but my personal heroes come up, Christine and Richard, and uh, tell us how it impacted them and, and their story so we all know about that. First of all, definitely impacted our lives.
many people's lives. One child, there's like thousands of people that get affected by it. This is a note I felt was appropriate, sad to read, but appropriate to read because this was my son's suicide note. And what better person to speak for the children than my son? Dear mom and dad, I'm sorry, but I am, I am not, I cannot live anymore. I just can't deal with all the bullying, being called gay, asshole, being told to go kill myself. I'm also done with being punched, pushed, tripped. I'm really sorry for all that I got put you through, put me through. I love you, capital letters, Jacob Terrace. And then I'll read another story. My son used to say to me, Mom, we don't, I don't have money to buy a birthday gift for you or a Christmas gift. And I, my response was to him, Jacob, all you have to do is write me a letter. Write me a poem. You don't, you don't understand how much that means versus going into a store. I didn't find, never got that letter, I thought. And I um, found, was going through some stuff one day and I found this letter. And this is a letter that he wrote but didn't give to me. This is my son. Dear mom, I love you so much. I hate to be picked on. I wish I will sa save someone from being picked on. I will try to be the best man to be. I love you, Mom. And this is a kid that had a lot of emotions, a lot of heart, that got bullied because he was that type of a kid. He was some Boy Scouts. He wasn't an all-time athlete. We also took the school to court. Consequences are what makes changes. Well, they did get found guilty of neglect. But as I know of at this point, there was no consequences. So where is it gonna stop? Where are we going to say enough is enough? Love you, Jacob. Thank you, Jim Tedisco. Well. Just a couple of additional words. Um, you know, in this society, things happen slowly and sometimes, you know, too slow to make a difference for many others. The DASA law has been in process for over 10 years. It didn't help Jacob. It is an important cornerstone, but we're supposed to learn from our experiences and evolve. You know, that was a bipartisan action. The new state budget has allocated over a billion dollars for mental health, but we can't pass a law to help our children. You know, you question yourselves. What if it was your daughter your grandson that committed suicide, committed suicide due to bullying, would it be important enough then? We must evolve. We must take action now. This is the next important stepping stone to protecting our children and their future. This must, they must be allowed to reach their full potential and your voice, your votes, are the key to unlocking this pathway. And we can only hope that you can see that in your lifetime before this tragedy affects someone you know. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you so much. Now I'd like to bring up uh, Isabella Cemetilli and her mother Paula and say uh, we appreciate your courage to be able to overcome the tragedy that impacted you and get to the place you are right now. And uh, your story is compelling and we want to hear it with your mom. So come on up. 
Well, I'm very uh, grateful to be here today, and my story, I was bullied as well, and I hope from my story and fighting for everyone who's bullied, and especially Jacob, to get definitely get this law passed. So in fifth grade, when I was about to sit down, a bully yanked out my chair. I slid down the chair. I suffered a concussion, fractured tailbone, neck and back injuries. From that, my life was changed forever in that instant that bully yanked out my chair. I was diagnosed with a rare and debilitating headache disorder. I wake up with a headache and go to bed with a headache. My dream of becoming a Radio City Music Hall Rackette was over. My dream to be dancing across the stage, what I absolutely love to do, was changed when that bully yanked out my chair. But as I said, that bully wasn't going to hold me down and that bully wasn't going to break my crown. So I started to bake. I learned a recipe from my papa, he was from Italy, and he taught me how to bake these little cookies. And I bake these cookies called Isnets. And I sell them and the money I receive, I give back to anti-bullying and brain awareness organizations. And when I wasn't baking, I started to write. And I wrote a book called The Short Story, One Tough Cookie, A True Story. And I hope my book can be read throughout all the schools in New York State, across the country, and possibly the world. So what has happened to me doesn't happen to any other child, because it is absolutely tragic how that bully could just change my life forever. And I know we all have a dream one day to become something, maybe an astronaut or maybe a quarterback in the NFL, but that bully changed my life forever and I can't become what I want to be anymore. But I hope my message of spreading awareness to anyone being bullied and anyone else throughout the country and the world, because what has happened to me, I hope and pray doesn't happen to anyone else. And with my strong family support and my strong faith in God, I know that I need to just stay strong every day. And there were times that it was hard going to doctors and physical therapy and so many appointments. I got down a lot, but I knew that I just needed to stay strong. And knowing people like Jacob's parents and other people that are getting bullied and parents and other relatives that are getting bullied, just to know that I want to be the voice to stand up for them and to fight for them. So that's what I'm going to do in all my power, too. So thank you, Senator Tedesco, and all the other politicians that are helping this bill get passed, since it's super important for all the children. Thank you. Mom, do you want to say just a little bit about your experience after this happened? Or will you pass? OK, now, we got a great sponsor in the New York State Assembly, and she's going to say some words here, Assemblyman Mary Beth Walsh. Thank you. Come on up. Thank you, Senator. Um, so I'm Mary Beth Walsh. I represent um, the areas around Saratoga, Schenectady, and Fulton counties. And I'm the sponsor of, the, of Jacob's Law in the Assembly. Um, the Assembly, unfortunately, again this year, has killed the bill in committee, in the Education Committee. Um, they're saying that it needed to be held. Uh, there, are, there have been concerns raised about um, if an individual was being bullied at school for being gay, for example, or for being called gay, that somehow it might inadvertently out the child to the parents by requiring parental notification. But the bill has been amended, and the bill has been amended to address that concern. Um, it's been primarily opposed by a handful of assembly members, but they've been enough to block the bill. So the, the bill will not pass this year, uh, despite all the best efforts on the Senate side, because we need the bill to be passed in the assembly as well. So. The bill is a good bill. DASA is a great bill, too. But as the senator said, it doesn't require parental notification. And you know, this year we passed a $229 billion budget that allocated $1 billion to mental health care. This bill, passage of this bill, doesn't cost a dime. It doesn't cost a dime. All it does is it says that if a child is being bullied in school, that the parents should be notified. And that just seems so common sense. The people that I've spoken with in my district can't even believe that it's a thing. I've, t I've spoken with different school superintendents and school to school, there's a different viewpoint about what DASA requires. Some school districts that I represent do notify parents and they don't use necessarily the language that was used in the bullying episode, but they're letting the parents know that your child has been bullied 
let's get together, let's make a plan to address it, to hopefully prevent this kind of thing from happening in the future. And that's what really needs to happen. You know, on a personal note, I have a beautiful blended family of six children. My oldest son is on the autism spectrum. He's um, 30 years old. And I just found out within the last couple of years about bullying that he experienced in middle school and in high school. I just found out he kept it to himself for years. And I feel so bad as a parent that despite the fact that I was very involved in school, uh, not, I wasn't notified. And also that Terry, my son, didn't notify me because he was embarrassed and he didn't want to burden me. So he carried that burden. And fortunately, he never did anything to harm himself. But as we know, that's not always the case. And my heart breaks uh, for your family. And I'm so sorry. And I'm, I really want us to be able to get this bill done. There's no good reason against it. My understanding is that there is a bill that's starting to circulate in the assembly that will um, modify DASA to, to, to try to address this concern. But it's not the same as Jacob's Law. I don't think it's as strong as Jacob's Law. And it's a, there's a big price tag that's attached to it, which I know that the governor's viewpoint is generally that if something has a price tag attached to it, it's got to be done during the budget process. And it, we can't wait another year to pass a bill like this to address this concern. We're losing our kids. And like I said, this bill doesn't cost a dime to taxpayers. It just simply says that wouldn't you want to know if your child was being bullied? And I think every parent's hands go up at that. So I, I'm happy to be here today, although it's very sad to me to think that we're, we're coming into the end of another session where thousands and thousands of bills are going to be taken up and passed, and yet this very important piece of legislation is getting stalled on the assembly side once again. So I hope that we can in the future get this over the finish line. I'm so grateful for the bipartisan support that we have for the bill. We need to make inroads on the assembly side and make, uh, make folks aware that this bill has been amended, addresses the concerns raised about it in the, past, in the past, and is a very, very important piece of legislation to uh, get parents involved, keep them involved, and to notify them in case their child is being bullied. So um, I want to thank Senator Tedisco for leading the fight in this, and I'm very happy to do whatever I can on the assembly side to, to make sure that this gets passed in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Well, Senator Jackson and myself are kind of from two different worlds, but we come together uh, quite a bit on issues that we agree upon. And I think one of the things we agree upon is when there's a whole bunch of things that from both sides agree upon and those things we argue about, we spend too much time arguing on this side when we could fulfill the things we agree upon. And he's also not a bad basketball player because we've done a little of that together. And uh, I'm so thankful uh, that in a bipartisan way, he's a sponsor of this bill. He believes in this bill. And I think that ends a, has a lot of support because he's well respected in the New York State Senate. And I'd like to have Senator Jackson say a few words. Thank you for being here, Senator. Thank you, Jim. Uh, good morning, everyone. And I wish we were not here. But you have to be, especially when uh, an important issue like this uh, is on the table. So to the families, both Jacob's parents, and to you and your mom and your family, I wish it never ever happened. Because I stand here as a father of three girls that my wife and I have raised, and not only us, but our family. It's a family affair. They're now 47, 42, and 36, and two grandsons, 13 and 10 right now. And they are the pride and joy of our lives. As a legislator, uh, this is a very important issue because if that was happening to my children, I would want to know about it. Or if my grandkids were bullying some other children in their classroom, we need to know that in order to communicate and tell the children that this is not how we should be behaving. And Jim talked about, and the assembly member talked about, thousands of bills pass our desks, and that's true. 
I have a bill that says uh, uh, there should be a social worker in every school and psychologist in every school. That's money, but it needs to be done. Because if you have social workers in there and psychologists that are, you know, the doors are open where the children are going in and talking to them and building a relationship of confidentiality and talking to them about the issues and concerns that they have is very, very, very important. And I'm talking about licensed social workers and licensed psychologists. But bullying, as we all know, is at an all-time high. And Jim said it with the social media, it just spreads like water coming off the, the falls. Students are being bullied for who they are, how they look, and even for who they love, or can you believe the fact that bullying occurs just because someone's size, they may be short or too tall or thin or too big, various aspects. But we need to teach our children to be respectful of all, no matter who they are, no matter what their size, their color, their race, religion, their sexual orientation, it is what it is. And it takes a compassionate village and that means a school leadership, counselors, social workers, and parents working together to make sure that our children are healthy in school uh, and can enjoy their learning environment. And every parent wants to know when their child is being bullied. And I support anything that strengthens the dignity for all act, but still protects the children's right to privacy within uh, the limits of their school so students can maintain the trust and confidence in their school community. Because if in fact a student, if I'm the licensed social worker or licensed psychologist and we're discussing an issue of concern in the school, and if in fact that gets out, those students are not going to come to the social workers or counseling. That's what they're there for. I understand though that uh, some people have some concerns about this, especially when, when you look at, um, you know, look at Jacob and his situation. They've been calling him all type of names. With respect to that, most people that are being bullied are people of color, people the LGBTQ, queer, plus, and they should be respected for who they are. And that's what life is about. And we as parents need to be respectful of our children and be, be able to communicate to people that these are our children, regardless of what they look like, regardless of what they may feel uh, as far as their sexual orientation. These are our children and we love them and we want them protected. So I support this bill. I supported it before. I will continue to support it. I think that what I say to some people if the goal is to get down there, whatever the goal is, we have to work together with the assembly to get something passed that will help, you know, deal with the situation and hopefully save lives. Uh, because I think research has shown that uh, the most bullied and the <laughs> most vulnerable people are young Hispanic teenagers. Uh, as far as from suicide and things like that. So Jim, and to the parents, and to you, young lady, and to my colleagues, I'm here to support, to do everything to try to move the bill where we can come together in unity and strength in order to get the job done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Appreciate it. The other day, uh, Senator mentioned uh, us working together. We had an education meeting, and as he knows, I brought this up, and I bring it up off frequently, uh, Jacob's Law, about the bill. And I'm happy to say, after the meeting, a couple of the members from the other side of the aisle came up to me and said, look, uh, do you have any pride of authorship for leading this bill? I said, I have no pride of authorship whatsoever. If you can take the lead on this bill and assure me you can get it passed in the New York State Senate, and I'll help you barter with Assemblyman Walsh in the Assembly, go for it. So a couple of these individuals are pending now who we may let them take the bill 
and be co-sponsors of the bill. But uh, the main goal here is to get this legislation passed and get parents involved like we continue to ask them to get involved in their schools more and more, but in, in this case, in a serious way to protect their children. We have Senator Walzak, who is one of the many sponsors uh, of my side of the aisle on this particular bill, who uh, is a big supporter of our young people, of our educational system, of uh, protecting diversity, and uh, I'm proud to have him as a sponsor of this bill and to be here. I'd like to have him say a few words, Senator Walzak. Well, thank you, Senator, and I would say thank you for your leadership on this issue, and Assemblywoman Mary Beth Walsh, thank you for your leadership in the Assembly on this issue as well. To Senator Jackson, thanks for the bipartisan support. And ma'am, thank you for reading that letter. It allowed everyone here that has any empathy in their soul to feel exactly what your son was going through. And the point is, parents in the state of New York deserve to know what their children are going through if it's in a New York State school. That's what this bill does. And not only for children who are victims of bullying, but for children who are doing the bullying, parents need to be a part of the process of development of their children. And if we're requiring the information to go to the State Education Department in some giant building in downtown Albany, that same information absolutely needs to be obligated to go to the parents of, of our students who are going through the growing process. So thank you for your testimony. Thank you for all of the work that you've done. And Senator, thanks for the opportunity to work with you on this bill. Thank you. Thank you. One thing I'd like to mention, if I had that uh, somewhere. Anyway, the head of the PTA, Kyle, uh, the executive director was scheduled to be here. She wanted to support the bill. We have a letter in the packet, it's, it's in, in the packet from her. It's so important to have the statewide PTA endorsing and supporting these bills, because this is the organization that involves parents with teachers on the issues that they both should be uh, supporting and working together on. And uh, she had a foot injury. She couldn't make it today, but she was so supportive of this, she wanted to send that letter which is in your packet, and I hope you take a look at this. Kyle is the uh, statewide executive of the uh, New York PTA. If you have any questions from anyone here, be happy to try to answer them. Yes. Yeah, it's it's in in bill form right now. Uh, it has passed twice in the past. It's a piece of legislation, and it just adds one amendment to that. As you, as a bullying effort rises, you know, there are some bullying efforts which, which somebody push somebody or something like that. Maybe they don't have to, but they know what a bullying, like it's defined in that uh, Dignity for All Students Act. When they have to report it. Oh, no, no, I just, when oh. you're done, yeah, I just want to. When they want to report it to the, uh, have to to the state education department. All this bill does say, have the same respect for the parents. We know they're important people, but probably not as important, I think, as the parents knowing that their child is being bullied and want to be involved with the mitigation, with the policy, with the plan, child who's doing the bullying, their parents, and the child who's being bullied. We owe that to them to involve them because we want them involved in every other part of their life. And, it doesn't, doesn't make sense, and as I said, when I asked that question, no parent in the room says, uh, I don't want to know. It just doesn't exist, really, for the most part. I just want to yeah. clear, clarify one thing. So there, Jacob's Law um, has been amended, and that amended bill uh, was killed in the Education Committee. The amendment had to do with um, circumstances when it was felt in the by professionals at the school that it would be detrimental or if the child did not wish the parents to be notified for a, you know, any particular reason. So the amendment's been made. The bill I was referring to that um, is also out there is a, is a um, uh, O'Donnell bill that he has out there to, it, that's an assembly bill to, and I don't know if there's a Senate companion or not, and that is another uh, bill to try to address DASA and to 
um, in some ways address what we're trying to do with Jacob's Law, but it is also a different bill. That bill, the O'Donnell bill, is the one that I referenced that has the pretty heavy price tag on it uh, for implementation, and tr it has a training piece to it and some other things. But that bill, um, although it's been introduced this session, we have not seen it come through committee. We don't think it's, I don't know that it's gonna go anywhere this year. And my point is, is that if we have Jacob's Law here, and it's done, and it's been amended to address any concerns, and it doesn't cost a dime, why are we going to wait a whole nother year to take up some other bill just simply because it's carried by a member of the majority? And, you know, I just want to say, in addition to what Senator Tedisco said about pride of authorship, we, we understand that we are both in the minority, and but we also understand that if you don't care who gets the credit, you can get a lot done. So in the past, Pat Fahey in the Assembly had carried Jacob's Law, she, she couldn't get it done in the assembly because it's been blocked. So I don't care if I carry it. I don't care if somebody else on the majority side carries it, but somebody needs to get it through the assembly and get this done. And I'm, I'm very happy to turn the bill over to somebody else that's willing to step up and do it. Um, but that's, I hope that that just clarifies your question. We were talking about two different bills, Jacob's Law being one and then a different bill that I don't, I, I don't think is going through committee, but it is out there. I don't know. I, I could tell. I could tell you later, but I don't know what it oh, is right now. Uh, we know what the number is for Jacob's law, but you're asking about the O'Donnell bill. Yeah, I, we, I don't. We don't have that. One. I don't have that handy in my. Yes. yes. The head of the school principal designates an individual. Could be a social worker. Could be a nurse could be an assistant principal who sits down with the student and questions him, how's your relationship with, with your family uh, in this particular bullying incident? These are the things that were happening. Uh, what kind of situation would it be if we contacted your parents? Because we do think it's important that they know about this and we probably could deal with it better and get the feedback from the child. Now, if he says, uh, oh, I'm, I'm very fearful, you know, uh, they don't know about me and if they find out about, they can make a determined decision yeah. then to say appropriately, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, but then they will bring a social worker in to help counsel the person. So that's the biggest holdup right now with the bill. Is that the biggest holdup right now? Yes, that's the only holdup. Okay, are there any repercussions within the bill if uh, parents are not notified? Like, is there any repercussions on the school? Like, um, not in the bill. No. Uh, because they have to go through the process of interviewing right now. Now, listen, if we could, we'd pass it the way it was first of all, because I think that's a red herring, okay? I think if we trust enough in our parents to ask them to be a part of every other part of the school, but the fact that their child is being bullied every day, then we don't really trust the parents. We have to have some trust in the parents, and we can deal with that. If it's a case like that, the social worker can intervene. But sometimes you need half a loaf to get your foot in the door. We, we couldn't get this passed the other way, so we said, what's your problem? We tried to address it, but even this wouldn't satisfy those individuals to pass the bill. In the I sit in the Education Committee, too, so when the bill came up on the kill calendar for that day, I spoke on it and I asked, I specifically asked, what, what is the reason? There's been an amendment, this shouldn't be a problem. I, I did not get a satisfactory answer. They, they basically just said, well, it needs to be held for further consideration. And they just, I mean, I, I know that very likely the reason they held it is because a, min, a minority member's name is on the bill. And, and we have many kill calendars at the end of session to, to it's not it, because it's a bill of statewide importance, not a local bill like renaming a road or or doing something like that. Um, they're they're going to kill my bill, um, but they didn't give any satisfactory reason for doing it. So that's unfortunately that's the system that we have. I'd like to have Christine, who talked with Mr. O'Donnell about the bill, and hear what she had to say, what he said in response to her. At that time, Patty Fahey was sponsoring it in the assembly. He, when he walked in the door, he basically let Patty Fahey, kind of, I would say he bullied Patty, Patty Fahey, and said to her that, I already told you this bill isn't gonna go anywhere. 
Then he sat and he sat and he looked at Rick and I and he says, what makes you think this bill's gonna do anything? I said, if it saves one person's life, that's humongous. I wouldn't want anybody to go through what we go through, losing a child. And he said, I'll let you know, it's not going out. When you walk out this door, the bill's not going with you, it's going nowhere. So he already killed it. And he's like one of these that did the DASA, so it's like he has more control over what's in there and that. Times have changed, mental health is a big deal. Our kids need to have their parents' support. Thank you so much.